All right, so we're starting off this edition of the Sports Max Zone with huge news coming out of the Jamaican Olympic camp. Reigning Olympic 100 meter bronze medalist and back to back silver medalist in the same event at the World Athletic Championships, Sharika Jackson has announced that she will not be lining up in the 100 meters at this summer's Games. This is reportedly due to an injury she picked up at the Hungarian Athletics Grand Prix in June. She will, however, compete in the 200 meters, the event which she convincingly won at the past two World Athletic Championships. Shasha Lee Forbes will be replacing Sharika in the 100 meters. Well, with us to unpack this important piece of news, um, of course, we have in studio Leighton Levy. And Leighton, you're known for covering these events, you know, really following up very, very closely. So what do you have to, one, say about this news? And two, you know, when we think about Jamaica and their Olympic medals, I'm starting to worry about the numbers. Well, it does have some impact. I mean, the news is already out. It's been out since last night, basically. But the impact that it has on Jamaica's potential medal hall is significant. One, of course, the absence of that potential medal in the 100. Yeah. The likelihood, because we don't know how fit she is, that she could also miss out in the 200, notwithstanding the fact that it's, it's her more comfortable event. But also the impact on the 4x1 relay, the relay team as well, but because we are told that they're not going to be available for, for the heats of the relays. And given the, the restrictions that we've had on the athletes inside the village, Sharika Jackson's absence makes that a potential disaster as well. So her injury situation and the, the uncertainty surrounding how well she will do in the 200 potentially impacts three medals for Jamaica. And when you remember that the estimates were between somewhere between 9 and 15 medals, some people are saying as many as 15, that's a significant number of medals that we're not getting in Jamaica as opposed to what obtained before. So this injury situation with Sherika Jackson, notwithstanding what she said today, that she's in good shape but not in world record shape, suggests, and we're basically looking at her body language, suggests that she's not even certain that she actually went up, end up with a medal in the 200 meters either, given the feel that we've had this year with uh, Gary Thomas and Julian Alfred and Lanny Thomas and several others who, are potential, who have the potential to displace her from the podium. Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see what Sherika Jackson actually does on the track before we have a clear idea about what it is that she'll be able to do. Yeah, and one of the things about you, Leighton, is, you know, apart from covering the stories, you also have your air on the ground when it comes to the Jamaican public and just around the Caribbean. So what's the mood like here now in Jamaica? What are you hearing when it comes to the population of Jamaica? Um, are they concerned? Are they worried? Um, they must be. Yeah, the Jamaican public is, is heartbroken right now. A lot of the comments that we see on our social media pl platforms are pretty much reflecting that. The, the people are worried whether or not she is... Well, there, to be honest, there are some people who are thinking that this is a ploy yeah. for her to challenge the world record, which is not, because from her very own mouth today, she said that she doesn't think that the world record is on top. And she said it a few times yeah. in a couple different interviews, actually. So she's, that's not the case. The reality is that there are a lot of Jamaicans, a lot more Jamaicans who are terribly worried because these are what Jamaica thrives off. The Olympics, the World Championships, the ability to win medals at these major championships up against the United States, our greatest rivals. So for a lot of Jamaicans, this is wor very worrying indeed. Um, there, in fact, when I published, when we published this morning on the sportsmax.tv website, there were people who were doubting it, calling yeah. it fake news, because they were unwilling to believe it. And yeah. that's to the extent to which they were unwilling to believe that this situation is... Is, um, is happening, especially given the fact that there is no Ilian Thompson here who missed the championships. Everybody's aware of Shelly and Fraser Price's injury issues. And now the last remaining member of the big three is now having similar issues as well. Yeah, a quick comment, Leighton, before we... Um, we have a feature that has been sent for us from Paris, but just on Shashali Forbes stepping in into the 100 metre, what are we to expect from her? I think she'll give it her best shot. The, the big challenge for me is that how does she switch from being thinking of herself as a reserve to now thinking she's a, a main competitor. But, but does that affect her readiness? Um, she, she would have been training, but it's not just the physical, it's the mental part of the focus of yeah. getting into competition against the world's best. Knowing that you're being watched by every single Jamaican, how well you do, 
Um, I remember talking to some of the insiders of her, of her camp at Sprintec, and they believe that she's in shape to run 1085 this year, at least 1085. If she does that, she gets to the final. If she does that in the final, she may not medal. But the thing is that I think she'll probably she'll give it her best shot. Given the circumstances, I don't think anybody could complain if she falls short of anyone's expectations because this is going to be very sudden. The track and field starts tomorrow, and not tomorrow, Friday, sorry. And that doesn't give her enough time to get herself into that focus, that, that locked-in phase that you need to be at this level. Yeah, so as we told you viewers at the top of the show and of course a short while ago, um, our team is in Paris and they've been working really, really hard and of course they've sent us this feature surrounding one of Jamaica's um, Olympic medal prospects, Kishane Thompson. He has been the talk of the town and now we really just want to hear what he has to say. Let's check it out. Kishane Thompson, training in front of the world's media for the first time since arriving in Paris. The Jamaican with the fastest time this year at 9.77 seconds is favored by many to return the sprinting crown to the land of wood and water. Today he was explosive out of the blocks. Well, I'm always excited when I see uh, the athletes who I coach do well from the blocks because it's a crucial part of the races and um, so it's, it's, it's very satisfying. And it seems the mind games have begun. The self-proclaimed world's fastest man, the American Noah Lyles, will be within his sights in a matter of days. Noah Lyles <coughs> loves playing the mind game, so is that a discussion that you've had with him so he's not affected by it when he's at the starting line? Well, I think you'll find that he plays mind games with those people who is faster than him. So, um, I don't think he will have that much opportunity this time around, but we'll see if his, if his mind game works on people who, are, who have demonstrated that they are a lot faster than he is. Is that what you've told Kishane as well, personally? I haven't, what, well, I'm, I'm not going to tell you what I tell Kishane, I'm just telling my opinions. Kishane may be an unassuming 23-year-old under the glare of the harshest spotlight for the first time, but it seems he knows how to play his cards off the field as well ignoring Lyles at the training facility and greeting his girlfriend, Jamaica's 400 meter runner Janelle Broomfield, may prove to be a mentally surgical move. There is more to Kishane that meets the eye, it seems, and every Olympic champion needs that. He may be the next one. Well, that piece gave me goosebumps. Too bad that I have on a long sleeve so y'all can see. I mean, I'm so excited for this, Leighton. It's um, one of the storylines, and I always say, as journalists and as lovers of sport, there are different storylines going into any major event. Kishane Thompson versus Noah Lyles. Kishane came out of nowhere. Well, for those of us that were not um, privy to the information about Kishane Thompson, he came, he won a lot of our hearts, and now, Leighton, it's on. And I'm going to say it's the Caribbean versus the USA. I'm not even going to give Jamaica all the plaudits for <laughs> Kishane because, you know, he's won the love, and that's just to speak to the extent of love that, you know, he's already developed so quickly. Um, look, the, the process is not as quickly as people think. It's been a long process, of overcoming injury, overcoming different kinds of issues. And so he's finally arrived on the scene right now, at probably the right time too. I think he's more mature. I think he's a lot calmer than previously. And his self-belief is, is, is significantly higher than it has been for the past few seasons when he's had those injury issues. And one of the things that we saw in Donald's piece there was the, 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 the hugging General Bromfield to me and ignoring no one else. For me personally, that's a master stroke because it tells me and it tells a lot of people around him that he's not afraid of no one else at all. Yeah. And that, look, I don't even need to be in your space. I can just hug your girlfriend and move right along because guess what? I'm going to... You know, I'm the man, I got yeah, this. I'm going to smash you. Yeah, well, you know, um, Leighton, the man that has been getting us all these um, different features, he's really been working hard in Paris. He joins us this afternoon on the Sports Max. So, Donald Oliver, how are you? I'm fine. It's after midnight, just to clarify here, and I'm going to provide a little bit of a delay to just inform you that it is early morning in Paris, France. Donald, I did tell the viewers that you've been working hard. Did you not hear that? I said it like three times. 
I, I just felt I need to emphasize that just a little bit more. Thank you, Dilma. You're so very kind. How All are right. You? So seeing that you're up so early and you have been working hard, what do you have for us? I want to know first about what you've been hearing about Sharika Jackson. We need all the latest scoop here. And then I'll ask you about the piece about Kishane. So Sharika first. Well, 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 can I tell you something? Is Leighton Lee was the one who brought the story, right? So I, I, I trusted him when I, I started on my phone. Um, I was actually at the training uh, facility when I saw the news. Would have heard whispers before. Sherika Jackson would have left minutes before the news broke on Sportsmax.tv about um, her being withdrawn from the 100 meters. We actually questioned Stephen uh, Francis about it, and you know, you know, Stephen Francis can be um, a little bit coy in his responses. Um, I think he flat out refused to answer, even though it was pretty clear that. Um, Sharika Jackson would have been missing from the 100 meters. Um, I think one of the journalists had approached Sharika, um, one away uh, away from the cameras, and she had indicated that uh, the question that he had asked in, in regards to whether she would be competing in the 100 meters, that she uh, he should address her coach. Um, again, another indication that she wasn't going to be going anywhere as far as 100 meters are concerned. But um, I think she's ready for the 200 meters, and we're looking forward to her participation her participation uh, in a few days. As far as Kishane Thompson is concerned, well, that's a little bit of a drama, isn't it? Because, it. as you would have heard in the piece, yeah. um, the, the meeting up with Janelle Brumfield was was the eye-opener there. And I actually thought that we missed it. But you know Jason Sawyers. I mean, he's just <laughs> incredible at what he does. Um, we have been the only ones to have actually... Uh, caught the footage of that interaction or lack of interaction, uh, you would say. Another thing that you should add, because I actually thought it was pretty deliberate what Kishane Thompson did, but I think for the first time, Noah Lyles would have been sized up with the Jamaican. Um, st staying beside him and looking up to him, literally, because Kishane Thompson is a big guy. Um, so Noah would have been close to him for the first time and probably would have been taken aback slightly by how tall and big he is. And then, of course, the interaction right after you're seeing it there where he just came across and, and hugged Janelle Broomfield. Of course, they would have been teammates at MVP. They would have known each other uh, before when Janelle Broomfield was in Jamaica trading uh, with Kishane and company at the MVP track club. So obviously no strangers. And even the controversy surrounding um, the, the pillar talk with her and Noah Lyles Obviously, Kishé proving a point that nothing against her. We're still close, um, and there's literally nothing you can do about it. I just think that the mind games which no one Lyles usually thrive on, for it to be reversed like that in front of him was was scintillating to watch, really. Donald, were you at the Puma press media, uh, the media launch this morning with um, Sherika Jackson? No, I was not, actually. Um, we, we heard about it pretty late. But well, that's another conversation altogether in okay. terms of how no, I the wanted to ask you, treated in regards to the information. I wanted to ask you about her body language when she was talking about the fact that she was running the 200. She, personally, didn't seem, she didn't seem too confident at all when she was asked about the world record. She said that there was no world record on top this year. But beyond that, given how her shoulders were slumped and her head was, she was looking down, it almost seems as if she doesn't believe that she's actually going to be on the podium, period. Was that, I don't know well, if you've seen it, but did you get that impression? I've seen the footage. What I can tell you is that it's a different demeanor to the one that we actually saw at the, the training facility. Mm. Um, she, she was a little bit cheeky with us in terms of whether she wanted to speak or not. We, we knew that she wasn't going to speak. Um, but, but in terms of her attitude, I, I think she didn't really want to, to correspond or interact or, or even you know, let, reveal any news. She had a different demeanor at the Puma House press conference, which uh, struck me differently. Um, I actually took something different from you late night. I actually thought she expressed herself uh, pretty, uh, relatively confidently for someone who had pulled out of one event and will take part in the next. Yeah. Um, and, and it seems as if that decision, decision was made quite uh, a, a few weeks ago, but was just revealed mm -hmm. uh, recently uh, by uh, Sharika and her team. So I think she's, I, she's, I don't think she's 100%. I, I don't think she's necessarily race sharp, 
because she hasn't run competitively or completed a race competitively in a while. For a month. But I think she's up for the fight to, to, to at least get a medal. And, yeah, she, she has strong competitors. Um, so so it, it, it's going to be difficult for her, but, but, I, but I think she has the strength to actually pull, pull through. Yeah. And, of course, you know, Donald, it's only a matter of time. Um, we're going to be... Keep, um, keep on following the story and we're hoping that the moment you get some sort of information, you will relate to the team and we're banking on you for that. Oh, anytime. Anytime. <laughs> All right, Donald. Go to well, bed. <laughs> want to thank you so much. Eventually. Get, yeah, get some rest and we'll talk again soon. Keep up the good work, Donald. Thank you. All right, Donald Oliver, they're joining us from Paris and he's, of course, um, bringing us all these different features, doing his work to ensure that we bring you, the viewers, the latest and the very best uh, when it comes to Paris 2024. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we're going to come right back because we have a lot more to discuss. Stay with us. <laughs>